evening and welcome to Reality Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment in Canada around the world. My name is Tahir I. Qureshi. I'm a fellow of Rules Issue of Canada, broker of record for City Pro Realty in Brokerage and your host. Tonight we're going to talk about home seller checklists. When you are preparing to sell your home, what things you have to check it out, create a list and uh, Watch for this. Where to begin, where to start. So this is very important. I request all, all my viewers, always go to rico.on.co. RICO is a regulator in the province of Ontario that protects consumer interest. And they regulate the real estate profession across Ontario. They also have a checker, uh, seller checklist. You can go and, and view yourself. So when we begin searching or planning to sell a house, the best thing is you need to find a good real estate professional. So you want to find out a person that is willing to accommodate you and he's competent, professional, has experience, and you have is the right fit for you. So this is very important. How you can check that? You can go to Google and you can check the, what kind of... Uh, a rating they have. You can go to Rico website to make sure the person that you are connecting is a is a license, has a valid license. The brokerage has a valid license. Now you can also call uh, a Toronto Regional Real Estate Board, Misaka Real Estate Board, or all your local board to make sure the brokerage or the person is working there because each one of you, Rico will give you the license, then you have a board that provide the membership and MLS. Some, some uh, a realtor have only one MLS. We have, my brokerage, we have two MLS. We have ITSO MLS, we also have a TRAP MLS. So right fit is mean, meeting of mind. The person is compatible. You interview a few people to make sure they understand. Now, there is a RICO information guide for, for consumer when you are selling a residential home. So you have a choices now. Under Trasa, there is no customer service, so you are a seller. You will have to watch quite a few things, how your transaction will be processed. So, you, when you are listing a price, so first choice is to select a realtor, so interview two or three realtors and, and make a selection. And once you have been presented RICO information guide, you have an abundance of uh, options there. Now, by law, TRASA, either you are a client or you are a self-represented party. So when they present you this, not only that you are hiring a, a brokerage, but you also designate a person who's going to be a seller agent for you, who, who you want to designate in the contract. So therefore, he or she will be performing the services for you. And then if, if that person is not available, the broker of record, just like me, I'm a broker of record for city pro building brokerage. We, they designate alternate person. Somebody goes on vacation, somebody gets sick, or something happens. Because once you have designated a person, you have two choices. Either a recommendation is made by the brokerage to give you another person of your liking, or you reject and you can ask for termination of your listing agreement. This is very important. And also when you talk about listing agreement, there is the parties involved, there is a commission percentage involved, there is also who is going to, uh, you know, uh, uh, represent you, you have designated person, commencement of the agreement and the termination of the agreement and any terms and conditions uh, dealing with multiple offers or uh, any property information sheet that you have. You always have to show the facts. We, as a real estate professional, are required to perform due diligence and find the material facts about the property. This is what is required, and we cannot hide. You must disclose, and we also share. And because it has to do with the professional liability, because something facts, some defects about, uh, about the property that you must disclose to a buyer. And you're not disclosing it, cause you harm. And if they discover it later on after the deal has been closed, 
you could, could be it could be subject to a, a claim against you. So it's very important not only realtors uh, try to find the facts and also explain to the consumer this is very, very important that you are disclosing all facts. Sometimes you have, you know, some flooding in the basement and it's been fixed. There's nothing harm in disclosing that this was a flooding and we have fixed it. Everything, here's a copy of the... The, the invoice that was a work was done or sometimes you have a roof leaking for example but you replace the roof you have an invoice and also when you are claiming that you have done so much improvement in the house to so make sure you disclose and provide a list of things that has been imp improved upon and you have done you have a copy of the invoices lots of people that oh we have so many uh, Improvement in the house, but they were 10 years ago. Yes, when you bought from the builder, you might have done that. But now it's 10 years old. You know, technology changes. Um, improvement needs to be made very frequently. This is very important for you to know that. So you d disclose all material fact about your property. So make sure there is no issue or claim after, uh, after this. Now. Most important, when you have listing, the virtual tools are created. You have to give consent in your agreement that you can go to social media. Now, over and above MLS system now, I advertise on social media, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So make sure that you give that express consent inside the listing. Therefore, there is no question uh, uh, back and forth. And most importantly is the commission. This has also been, been an issue for commission. So now law says that, and also Real Estate Council of Interior Regulator encourages a representation by independent broker where it's practical. So for example, I have a listing and I will designate, and if buyer come in my open house, I'm going to say, okay, I give you general information, but I'm going to designate a broker or a salesperson in my brokerage to represent him because I am representing seller and I've been designated in my listing agreement or seller designated representation agreement. So similarly to this, now, sometime with a small brokerage, one or two, that you don't have much choices but to work with the person that who's listed it, then you have a consent and disclosure needed from from the buyer and seller, both parties, to make sure they all consented before you enter into the agreement. Otherwise, you send them to outside brokerage, cooperating brokers. Go and, and let them represent it, and you represent the, the buyer. Now, also commission, for example, if you want to give commission, you end up with a multiple representation, or you have two different uh, brokerage involved, uh, uh, people involved with the same brokerage, and if you want to offer any kind of a reduction in commission, it should be in the agreement, in writing. Because it's very, very important that it's well disclosed what will happen if I have a multiple representation, I end up with representing the both. My commission will reduce by half percent or one percent or whatever. It has to be in black and white. It also have the option of the seller to terminate the contract if if a designated person is gone too far, too long and he or she is not able to perform services and alternative to that is not acceptable to the seller, you can terminate the agreement. It should be in the clauses in there. I have almost three page clauses now. So you can sign and walk away anytime you want if you're not satisfied with services. We're not supposed to hold our client or sellers hostage because of contractual obligation. They have special needs, certain challenges, they want to they want help from us. So the more you work with confidence and jointly as a team with your client, with a seller, it's much better for you and me to, to, to deliver service. So you have options for people working with the seller. You know, when we have a condition, we have offer comes in, sometimes you have a multiple offer. So you have to educate them how you deal with the multiple offers. So they need to be educated that how this works. When you are countering, 
if, if it's a, just a single offer or you have a multiple offer, you're countering and who they're going to select. And also now law allows us to release some content information about the, the offer. So that has to be declared to, uh, to the through listing or through your agent or broker to the potential buyer agent that your information about your offer will be disclosed except personal information. Is the discretion of the seller how much information they will disclose? Content, personal information is prohibited. It will not be shared. Most cases likely is content, for example, price maybe, maybe how long the offer is valid. Oh, uh, that is something I would not do it. You will always say, here's the offer price. Condition sometimes, wave condition, not condition, is up to the seller to decide. And you have to advise them what will happen if you advise certain thing. People can walk away. Somebody will decide to, when you counter them, you always remember the offer that comes to you is gone and you, now your offer is going. And you be very selective and technical to make sure that because buyer can accept, reject, walk away, or counter. It depends on the circumstances. Our goal is to inform based on the instruction from the seller how many offer are received? If they tell us to disclose a price, you disclose the price. If they are to tell you in writing to disclose this information, in this case, in most cases, I have noticed that price is the major factor in terms of negotiating or bargaining a new price. And this is where mostly people are doing. Now, and when you are offering your home for sale, and there are confidential information that we don't talk about it. Confidential information remains between the brokerage because we have to verify square footage of your house, large sizes, your zoning, and uh, you know, when this property was sold before, um, and marketing in the area, how many are sold. We are preparing ourselves when we are giving a CMA or a proposal to list your property. So we are collecting of information from you and you can only share the content which is authorized by the seller and, and and you never know we can have a multiple offers but there is always <clears throat> the realtor will help you to navigate through the challenges we're going to take a short break and we're going to come back and continue our conversation at home seller checklist Q wireless and computer. Apne tamam devices, phones, iPads, tablets, MacBooks, or laptops ke repairs or maramat ke liye. Ham se aaj hi rata kijiye. Ham quality expertise ke saath saath aapko free of cost diagnosis bhi denge aur data security ki guarantee bhi. Apne muft code ke liye hume aaj hi call karein six four seven three five zero six six zero six. Thinking of buying or selling real estate? Call us today. We are one-stop solution provider for your real estate needs. Our commission plans to meet your budget. Buy, sell, or build. We can help. Think of us today. Call us at 905-785-9923. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. Thank you. Welcome to SFK Law, where we're committed to providing legal guidance tailored to your needs. When it comes to real estate law, every detail matters. At SFK Law, we will assist you whether you're buying, selling, or refinancing your property. We'll guide you throughout the process with complete transparency. Whether you're an employer or an employee, our team will provide expert guidance and representation to safeguard your rights and interests. Whether you're an existing business owner or you're looking to buy or sell a business, at SFK Law, we can help you structure the transaction from start to finish. If you're searching for a lawyer, contact us today to schedule your consultation. Hi, my name is Manish Sani. I'm running to be your city council for Ward 5. And right now I'm standing at the gateway to Canada. Yes, in our ward is the gateway to Canada. 
We have so many thousands of thousands of people coming in and out of our ward every day, which brings the responsibility on us, the residents of Ward 5. But right now, that responsibility, I feel, should be shared. It should not just be ours. It should be all the entire countries and the provinces. Because when you land here, you go through our ward, which, of course, causes more requirements of services, which I don't feel that at this point we are getting our fair share for. And I'm looking around and I'm going to show you certain zones, certain areas that are going to bring a reality to you, which you've seen, but I want you to see it through my eyes as well. I want you to join me on this journey to making sure that we create the gateway to Canada as it should be, clean, courteous, and making sure that it brings the joy of what Canada is supposed to bring to us. So thank you for everybody for listening to me. I look forward to seeing you on the doors and at the polls, but voting is what's going to make the change. We have to make sure that we vote, bring out the vote to make sure that we can have enough people's voices so Ward 5 can actually flourish the way it should. Thank you so much. Good evening and welcome to Realty Coffee Talk on Awards Entertainment in Canada around the world. My name is Thai Rai Kreshi. I'm a fellow of Rural City of Canada and broker of record for City Pro Realty in Brokerage. Last week, we have a trade mission, uh, Ontario real estate trade mission from United States, uh, Charleston, uh, from, and we have a lot of friends that came with their CIPS uh, from NAR, and they're my global CIPS partner. So we went to Tridel projects, and uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Chan. He's also CIPS and vice president of uh, uh, sales at Tridel, and also uh, my uh, friend, Anita, uh, Zaman, who is a uh, CIPS and also broker manager with Tridel. They have shown us uh, uh, projects in, um, in Toronto. And also next day we went to uh, Lakeview Village project in Mississauga. If anybody is interested in these projects, please call my brokerage, 905-785-9923. We have a complete details and we can get a special deal with you. We also went to Park Home Builders and uh, to visit our, uh, you know, trip there. And next day, we also have a delegate from Nigerian, uh, from Nigeria. There is uh, a lot of city development projects. Uh, I have a global partnership with, uh, with, uh, with, with the Ni in Nigeria CIPS partner, uh, Adini Tenubo. And uh, it was a wonderful, and after the show, I'm going to meet, meet them again, say goodbye, and uh, we're working on uh, lots of projects, not only in there, but also potential investment in Ontario. And uh, just want to update you, and there's a realtor quest going on now. Today is the last day at realtor quest. I'm sure it's finished now, 15 and 16. And I hope that it was a very informative for everyone. I met some global committee member from Florida, and uh, Miami and, and other places. So I'm looking forward to continue or expand our uh, global network. And I have signed many uh, global uh, referral partnership around the world. So if anyone is looking to buy a property overseas, I will be your uh, connection to the world in real estate. We're going back to uh, uh, seller's checklist. So, it's very, very important to decide when to, to sell the property. And now, as you know, because of pandemic and interest rate went, went up, and because of that, affordability become an issue and you have no choice. If you cannot maintain payments and you, don't, you are afraid of being getting a default and you lost a job or something happens, sell your house because you have no choice. You don't want a default. And if there is no income coming and you're spending money and you're running out of your, your equity in the house, sell your house. Obviously, you pick up the right realtors to make sure he understand, he or she understand the process to make sure that uh, you are comfortable with the person. And then you sign the contract. Listing contract will have a lot of provision now. First of all, you go through with the uh, uh, RICO information guide. Seller or buyer, they are defined, there are about 13 pages. You have to acknowledge that, that you have went through and you chosen a brokerage service or designated brokerage service as a seller representative or designated buyer representative, depending on. In this case, is seller. Seller designated representation agreement. Now you sign, you define all the terms and condition, period, commission has no... No requirement from law, agency, trade organization. It's between you 
and the brokerage, a type of service you want, certain thing you want, virtual tours, you want video, drone videos, you want social media exposure, how fast you want, how much effort you want, and let your agent also explain that and put it in your listing agreement. Obviously, most important thing is asking price for the property. This is where I have also experienced and other realtors also experienced. Seller has some expectations, but you have to look at the market condition and condition of your house. Because sometimes if the house is well decorated, well painted and presentable, then it sometimes goes quickly. Not all the time go quickly. Because of certain amount of uh, uh, price, asking price, they have to determine affordability. A million dollar mortgage will cost you almost $8,500 uh, $7, a month carrying costs, even though it has a, a principal and an equity contribution in it. But you still have to pay that money. So this is why I always ask that you get your basement finished. If you need a license, you can come, come to me, call 905-569-9939, and I'll get you our engineer to give you a proposal of get, getting a, light, a building permit, designing a building permit to build your luxury home, a luxury basement apartment. So you have an income. Average base, basement income now is between 2,500 to uh, 2,500 to 2,800. So you can get an income plus you have an income from or you're living in the second floor. Or some of people are moving in a basement, they can get more rent. A, a about 2,000 to, uh, to 2,500, you're almost paying $3,500 uh, $3, rental or maybe even more. And uh, if you have a 25 to 3,000, you're looking at uh, 4,000 to 4,500 rental for your property. So instead of selling it, you may be able to rent it. Call me, 905-785-9923. I can give you option and see how you can do that. And now, preparing for your home for sale, this is very important. Curb appeal, clean your landscape, uh, make sure it's presentable, fix the, the stairways uh, or the, your driveway, get them uh, depending on what the conditions are, because if you interlock and those stuff are expensive, but you can hire someone to stain it and uh, resurface, uh, it will cost you uh, maybe a couple of thousand and you, it looks good. And clean your windows and prepare the house. Get rid of all the extra stuff that you don't need it. This is why I make it look room bigger and bigger. Unnecessary stuff, remove it, dispose of, or put in a storage. This is why it's very important preparing home for sale. And also, allow your realtor the freedom to market your house. There, there's, there's so much technology that your realtor can do that for you. Interview them how they're going to market that. Put in the marketing strategy in your listing agreement. I created a three-page uh, Schedule A which allow them what, how I'm going to sell your house. And obviously, your duration of your contract you sign. And also, prepare your financing. If you are uh, upgrading it, you're selling a house, and you need to prepare how much money you need. And this is why experienced professional can help you. And if you can find an FRI, he's also a realtor, hire him. Because I'm also FRI. I have six designations in real estate. I'm a FRI Fellow of Real Estate Institute of Canada. I'm a certified real estate specialist and also certified international property specialist. I'm a senior real estate specialist. I'm a senior serving seniors because they have a different needs, special needs. I'm also a seller representative specialist specialized in selling. ABR also accredited buyer representative. That means they're focused on buying. So I have all the designation from top, bottom to the top to help and, and deliver a valuable service to my client. Now, so you get your financing done so you know that this is the minimum threshold that you must sell in order to buy the property that you want to buy. So then when offer comes in, you always listen to your, your advice 
from real estate professional because they're expert in real estate. They, they will help you. They will read you all the conditions that can impact. It's not about just the price. The conditions are also important. Assignment clause uh, or they want to add somebody in, in, later on to get the financing if they get in trouble. Home inspection. And they will discover all deficiencies if there is uh, issues. And it's very important. You have a financing clause, appraisal clause. So now appraisal clause is more important because bank is going to give you money. This is why you have to understand that these are the requirements that we have to follow and check that. And obviously, finally, you accept the offer. Sometimes they give you a firm offer because a buyer will take the home inspector with them. And they already know the seller already have secure financing. And based on the property, it's a good location, good property, well presented. It has its value. The bank will give you uh, approval because you're putting a <clears throat> more money down. Because bank always see whoever is putting more money down, especially upgrading, smaller to a bigger home. They know that you have lots of equity that you built in before. Then is come the closing time. During that closing time, I always said, you get your people, team, ahead of time. In this case, you have a realtor and you have a lawyer who's going to close the deal. Money will come to the lawyer. Lawyer will, uh, lawyer will sign the paper and send a big uh, title transfer to the, the buyer's a lawyer. And they collect the money. They, if there is any difference in commission, they deduct that and then they give the money to the brokerage, listing brokerage, because they need to give to the cooperative broker if they're involved. And then you get your check. Always try to remember that you keep a distance between buying and selling. If you're buying it, don't close on the same day. You know what happens is that sometimes the seller doesn't close and you end up give, having a difficulty. So you have a room. I always recommend about a week between the two, buying and selling. So that way you are able to comfortably sell your home and be happy and move on with your with life. If you need more detailed information about uh, seller checklist, please visit realtycoffeetalk.com and look for seller's tips. It will give you comprehensive information or call my office 905-785-923. I'd be more than happy to help you. Thank you for watching. You are watching Realty Coffee Talk on Awards Entertainment. We'll see you next Thursday at 7 p.m. in Canada, around the world. May God bless you all. May God bless Canada. Bye for now.